So, um, please, uh, just, okay. So, usually when I record an episode, I try to make it as entertaining as I can. It's very clear that I'm failing at that, but I, I try. But today, it's going to be extremely boring. So welcome to the boring episode. I usually receive a lot of questions about some of the basics in camera profiles, you know, and, and camera formats. Uh, the most popular three questions I get are, what is RAW exactly? I mean, we all hear about RAW recording. What is RAW? Why should I care about it? The second question is, what is a camera profile? And why should I use a camera profile? The third question is, what is exactly the difference between log and flat camera profiles and why would I choose one over the other? I already recorded a course that deals with all this. It's a free course, so it's available for free on filmsimplified.com. So today we're going to watch some of the videos that answers these basic questions for people uh, you know, to, to learn more about this. And I'm gonna leave a link to the course. It's a completely free course. You can watch uh, all the course and it includes free lots and a lot of stuff. This is the really boring part. Please watch it because it's gonna, I think it can help a lot with you learning a lot of things. In order to understand LUTs and camera profiles, we must start with the camera and how it works. The heart of every camera is a sensor. Light hits the lens and the lens sends the light to the sensor. Let's take a closer look at the sensor. The sensor has photosites that measures the power of light hitting it and records the value. To reproduce color, there are three types of photosites, red, green and blue. When light hits the sensor, each photosite records the power of light hitting it. So now we have a table of numbers. These numbers cannot be displayed on a TV, as the TV is looking for an image, not numbers. In order for the image to be viewed on a TV, first the image must pass through a processor that processes the information and produces an image that can be displayed on a TV. So now in order to save this information, we have two options. We can either save the raw data, or basically the numbers captured by the photosite, or we can save the processed image. Let's clarify one thing first. When you process raw data to an image, you always end up losing information. But on the other hand, raw requires way more storage and space than most processed files. Still, raw provides way more flexibility in post and grading than processed images. So in order to use processed images, but introduce some of the flexibility of RAW, manufacturers introduced flat profiles and log profiles. That's why we have flat and log profiles. They basically exist in order to give images some of the flexibility of RAW when it comes to color grading. One of the main improvements that log and flat profiles uh, introduce into processed images to emulate RAW is the increasing uh, dynamic range. Let's take a closer look at this image. You will notice that in uh, every natural scene, like this one, there are some bright areas, like this one, and this one, and some dark areas in the same scene, like here, and here. So if we sample the brightness from various parts of the image, we will have the dynamic range of the image, which is basically the difference between the darkest and the brightest point in the scene. So naturally you would assume that a TV can display all this information. Unfortunately not. TVs have a very limited dynamic range of around six stops. So if we try to display this image on a TV, we will be losing and throwing away a lot of the information in the scene, in the highlights and shadows. So our image will end up looking weird on the TV. So all of the information in highlights and shadows will be lost and we will end up with a very contrasty image. And if we try to compensate for shadows, we will lose information in the highlights. So now our shadows are displayed correctly on the TV, but there's nothing in the highlights. And if we try to compensate for highlights, we will end up losing information in the shadows. 
The solution came with cameras. Cameras can record a lot of information, way more steps and way more information than what a TV can record. And cameras can compress the information to match the color space of the TV, while keeping all the information in the file to be used later when color grading. But there is one problem. When we display this file coming from the camera on a TV, it ends up looking really flat, with way less saturation and way less contrast. And in order for it to be viewed the right way, we have to color correct the image in order for the image to look natural on the TV. And these flat profiles that are designed to retain all the information coming from the camera and the scene come in two different types. Flat profiles like uh, Canon Cine style and log profiles like log C or S log. It's important to distinguish between flat and log profiles. On the bottom here, you have the screen's dynamic range, going from shadows on the left to highlights on the right. And this is the camera's dynamic range, which of course exceeds the screen's dynamic range. So way more data is being recorded to the camera than what can be displayed on the screen. A curve is a way to fit all the information captured by the camera into the color space of the screen. You'll notice that with flat profiles, the highlights and shadows are compressed, and way more data and way more information is being given to the midtones. Log tries to correct this by rearranging the stops, so both flat and log profiles end up looking washed out on a screen. The main difference is with the distribution of the information. One more thing to understand is that usually, log always ends up looking a bit dimmer than flat profiles, even with the same exposure, due to the redistribution of midtones or pushing the midtones towards the shadows a bit. Both must be corrected so the image looks normal on a screen. Okay, let's take a look at real life examples of Rec 709 versus uh, flat profiles versus log profiles. Here we have a scene where we're shooting into the window. So basically all the light in the scene is coming from the window here. In this scene, we have an extreme dynamic range. So the window here is very bright, while this side of the sofa and the wall here are very dark. So it's going to be very hard for the camera to record uh, everything into the same file because of the difference in lightness. In this case, we're exposing uh, for the window, so we're retaining the information in the window, but we're sacrificing information in the shadows here. So even though the window is exposed and we have all the information we want, we're losing information in the dark areas of the image. And if we try to expose uh, for the dark parts, we're losing information in the highlights completely. So the window here is overexposed, this side of the sofa is overexposed, and we're losing information here. However, we have all the information we want in the shadows. Now, these two examples are shot with Rec. 709, which in situations like these will give us the uh, option only to expose for the highlights, so we're getting the highlights correctly, but we're losing all the information in shadows, or the other way around. So we're losing all the information in highlights, but we preserve the shadows. Then let's take a look at a flat profile. A flat profile will try to correct this by trying to squeeze all the available information that was obtained from the camera sensor into the same file. This is a flat profile. Notice that this is somewhat better. We have some information in the window and we have information in the shadows. This is also another flat profile. We still have some information in the window and some information in the shadows here, which is of course way better than the Rec. 709 files. However, let's take a look at the lock profile. This was shot with S lock. Notice that in the same scene now, we have all the information. So we have all the information outside the window and we have also information in shadows. The image looks a bit flat now, but that's fine because we can color correct this image to pull all the information out again. But as a canvas, we have the highlights and the shadows in the same image. Let's take a look at another example. We have the clock, which is the main object of the scene, and we have the highlights and we have the shadows. Notice what happened here. In order to get the highlights not overexposed, we have to underexpose the main object in the scene, which is the clock. 
In the second image, we got the clock to be exposed the right way, but unfortunately, because of the limited color space, we lost all information and highlights. Then let's take a look at two flat profiles. This is a flat profile, which is way better, of course. And we were able to lift the uh, clock's exposure a bit up without overexposing the highlights. And this is another flat profile. Then let's take a look at S-Log. So this is a lock profile where we managed to get the clock to be exposed the right way. And at the same time, we retained all the information in the highlights and in the shadows. However, the image doesn't look so punchy now it will need to be corrected before it can be viewed properly. Let me correct it fast now. Okay, I just corrected the S-Log footage fast. And notice that we managed to get a punchy and a very good looking image. And at the same time, we managed to get the clock exposed the way we want without losing information or um, overexposing the highlights and we still have information in the shadows. Remember when we spoke about uh, log versus flat footage? Let's take a look at a live example. This is a flat profile. So we managing to get most of the information. Okay, not as good as S-Log, but we managed to get most of the information into the image. However, notice the transition from midtones to highlights because highlights are compressed in flat profiles. Take a look at this part here. Take a look at this part and this part. Notice that they go from midtones to highlights very fast in a very strange way. Let's go back to S-Log and notice how we go gradually, very gradual from midtones all the way to highlights. Let's take a look at the two images side by side. Notice that even though both images are exposed the right way, notice how highlights uh, have way more contrast in flat profiles than in log profiles. Let's take a look at another example. This is Rec 709. Take a look at the clouds here. Even though nothing is overexposed, but the clouds still look unnatural. This is a flat profile, and this is another flat profile. However, this is a lock profile. Now let's try to correct the lock profile. Notice that how uh, after we corrected the log footage, we still have uh, all the clouds, nothing is overexposed, but the clouds look way more natural because of the way log retained all the information in the highlights without adding contrast to it. These are real life examples for Rec 709 versus flat versus log. <laughs>